decided on the lathe bed, I'd already cleaned this on the outside. I did a general cleaning really before I started taking the thing apart. I decided on the lathe bed that I was going to clean it in place here. I'll probably strip it right on this table and everything. You get so much dirt and grime on things. I don't think maybe the stripper is going to get to stuff, so I might as well get it real clean. And this area under the head down here, uh, it was it had never really been touched because I couldn't turn the lathe over when it was all assembled. I've seen other people drop these down in a bucket and clean them, but it's man, this thing is so heavy. I just don't want to handle it that much. So far, it's just been cleaning things, putting away tools, washing my hands. Just never seems to end. Although I do have some parts I'm putting paint on, I still don't think I'm even halfway through the painting project. Unless you count cleaning. Because it definitely has to be done before anything can be painted. Just metal shavings and every nook and cranny all over everything. I don't know, maybe it'll get that dirty again someday. I hope not. Another thing, this, this machine surface here, this was painted, which I find kind of odd. I don't think I'm going to paint that. I realize I don't have a super flat surface to mount the thing to, but would it seem like that establishes something flat? And why uh, put something on it? It's going to take it away from flat. And that green paint, it's on here. It's even down here on the bottom of the slave. I don't know if someone reached under it when they painted it or what. It would be fun to meet somebody who's used this lathe and tell me something about the history of it. Since it was built in 1950, it's probably been used by quite a few people. Just another step in the process. I'm going to bring you along for a little stoning here. I haven't wiped this off yet to see what it looks like. It's got little places. I can tell when I was scraping over it. Little high spots and bumps from uh, people dropping tools on the ways over the years. Turning this stone. Using PB Blaster as a lubricant. I'd love to find someone who could put this on a uh, surface grinder that would be accurate. Take a couple thou off this bed for me. Been doing a little bit of investigating. Not confident I found anybody to do that. All right, so let's wipe off this side that has only been cleaned of grease. Let's wipe off this side that I've stoned. And the amount of time I spent stoning this before I put the camera on was probably equivalent to what I spent after I started. So not a whole lot of difference. But I can see, I need to bring you in closer and show you what I'm talking about. Here's an excellent example of an, of an I guess you'd call it an anthill. Get as 
close as I can get here. I'm trying to leave the camera at full resolution. And what I'm talking about is this little spot here. Now that's a place where someone has dropped a tool, th thrown the wrench out, or thrown something out of the chuck, who knows what. And that made a dent in the lathe bed. Well, when you push metal down, it's just like dough. When you push it down, when you push your finger into dough, metal rises up around that area and makes a high spot. So a dent always is almost always going to include a high spot. And that's very pronounced there. You can see some little bit of polished areas around some of these other spots. That's obviously the worst one. Um, so a dent or a mark in a piece of steel is never as simple as just the divot itself. There's always more going on. So I'll stone these some more. I can feel a little transition from where the carriage has been riding to this surface. It's very, very, very slight. And what's weird is where I feel it on the other side of the lathe, the high spot is where the carriage has been riding. Mm, yeah, it's that way here too a little bit. So the, uh, um, the tailstock has spent a lot of time here going back and forth and has wore this slightly. So I don't know how much a human being can feel. That might only be a few tenths. And this, by the way, this isn't a precision uh, lathe for making space shuttle parts. So I'm not sure how much it matters, but I still would like to make things as nice as possible when I put them back together. Make the lathe be as much as, as, as high a quality as it could be. Make sure I'm not carrying any debris off the bench to put under the stone. I'm thinking about getting uh, buying a ground plate, um, surface ground plate of steel to put a piece of wet dry sandpaper on and just going over the whole surface that way which would, which would be whatever cut I would take would be leveling I mean, it might be, might be silly in some more polished spots around uh, indentations here. Might be silly, but it might be a great idea, a poor man's way to uh, improve this. A nice long, you know, like if I were to use something really aggressive, that was uh, short like this stone, I would end up with peaks and valleys and you, know, you can't help but push harder on the leading edge of the stone the direction you're pushing it. I've got other problems like these edges here. I want to clean those up, but they're not wide like this. So it'll be hard to hold the stone. It'll be hard to hold a stone perfectly flat with that. And not end up, you know, putting a radius of some kind on that. Ooh, yeah. Definitely want to get rid of the anthills or the raised areas around any dents. Dent's not a correct word, but I guess chips, or I guess a chip implies a removed portion of metal. These are just places where the cast iron's been struck with something in the past. Probably dropped tools. When I was using my father's very good quality lathes he used in his uh, portion engine building, I was 
always under instructions to keep rags over the ways. And that was to keep metal shavings off the ways, but it was also if I dropped a wrench or a tool bit or a ream or something on his ways, it was much less likely to mark the ways. I see a lot of YouTube videos where people are using lathes and in fact, the ways exposed. That's exposed to any drop tool. And there can be some safety issues with a rag or a cloth. And you could get a nice big shaving, you could snag it up and be throwing it around in the air and throw debris into your face or something. So I'm not saying it's a perfect solution, but it's a good solution. Boy, that just sticks to it like a magnet. It's just such a good flat seal there. I'm turning the stone periodically. And I'm turning the stone as I use it, trying not to tilt it. How do you suppose the first lathe bed was made? You know, it takes a machine tool to make a machine tool. I bet there was a process like this involved. Keep the soil out of my stone. Let's see what we got. I notice we have a dark spot here and here, here and here. So it's high right there and it's high right here. It's probably been that way all its life probably has something to do with the manufacturing process. How it was held. And this end of the lathe would be the least important to, to be of high accuracy. I think it's looking a lot better. I think that I'll uh, put a lot more work into that. Wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things, nine indentations right here. It's like somebody took a punch and a hammer to it. You can still feel the high spot. Wow. Yeah, some of that edge, I, I, can, I can feel it even less now. I don't know. If any of you have any ideas for best way to do this I'd love to know. I, I did hear about somebody uh, using sandpaper and a granite surface plate. I don't know if I know anybody with a granite surface plate big enough to let me do that. And I'm not sure if I owned one that big but I would want anybody putting a big piece of cast iron up on top of it. Probably anyone that owns something that big would be much rather grind my ways on their uh, on the machine that's meant for it. I get multiple uses out of everything. All these oily rags I'm using to soak up my cleaning solution. A little closer look. This is the tailstock end. This is the headstock end. I think this machine's got some miles on it. I plan on putting some more miles on it.